Next, let's talk about Apache Mesos. Like Yarn, it's another resource negotiator, but uh, Mesos is a little bit different. It's actually much more broad in its scope, so let's talk about it. We're going a little bit on a tangent here because Mesos isn't directly associated with Hadoop, but it's something you might hear about, so I want you to make sure you understand what Mesos is and how it differs from Apache Yarn. Now, Mesos is a project that came out of Twitter, and they're using it to manage their computing resources, all their data centers of computers at Twitter, presumably. And it is a system that manages resources across your entire data center or data centers. So it takes your entire pool of hardware and distributes work amongst it. So very similar in spirit to what Yarn does, but the big difference is that Yarn is restricted to Hadoop tasks, you know, things that are running like MapReduce or Spark or things that are coded against Yarn that need to have data locality to the understanding H underlying HDFS file system, whereas Mesos is much more general in scope. So it's made for just writing any old kind of application that needs to be distributed throughout a pool of computing resources. That could be long-lived resources like web servers or small little tasks that just need to run for a few seconds even. So it's really more of a general purpose system than Yarn is. Mesos is intended to manage the computing resources across your entire data center as opposed to just your Hadoop applications, okay? So it's for more than big data, it's for doing everything. So like I said, we're going a little bit off the reservation here. Mesos isn't technically part of the Hadoop ecosystem, but there are components of the Hadoop ecosystem that we're going to talk about that can operate on top of Mesos instead of Yarn. Uh, the two noteworthy ones being Apache Spark. Spark was actually originally written for Mesos and not Yarn. So, you know, Spark does have good support for Mesos if you have a Mesos cluster already running. And Apache Storm, something we'll talk about in the next couple of sections, that also can run on top of Mesos instead of Yarn. That's something that we use for processing streaming data in real time. Now, you don't have to choose between one or the other necessarily. Uh, you can actually integrate Hadoop Yarn with Mesos using a package called Myriad. So by using Myriad, you can have Yarn actually talk to Mesos to get its resources and then kind of have the two interoperate. And that way you can actually intermix your Hadoop computing resources amongst all the other stuff on your computing resources in your data center. You don't need to partition things necessarily. So how does Yarn differ with Mesos beyond that? Well, Yarn is what we call a monolithic scheduler. So with Yarn, you give it a job and Yarn figures out where to run it. And that, that's it, it's just that one transaction, okay? But with Mesos, it has this dual tiered system. So with Mesos, you don't say, here's an app, go figure it out. Mesos just makes offers of resources back to you, to your framework, and then it's up to you you know, the person writing a framework to decide whether to accept or reject that offer of resources from Mesos. And you also specify whatever scheduling algorithm that you want. So it's a two tiered system. And it turns out this scales a little bit better. And it's uh, what companies like Google and Twitter actually use. So when you're dealing with, you know, massive computing resources and a massive amount of different kinds of jobs that are running at different lifetimes, that's a good, a good approach to take. Now, Yarn, in contrast, is optimized specifically for longer analytical jobs like you see when processing big data and trying to extract meeting out of it on a Hadoop cluster. Mesos is built to handle that, but also long-lived processes like servers that just run forever and short-lived processes as well. So Mesos is just more general purpose. So how does this all fit into what you're actually building? Well, if you're looking for an architecture that you can code all of your applications against and you know, not just Hadoop stuff, but everything else, Mesos might be worth looking at. If you're at a really large organization that has a lot of distributed applications that you need to run, and some of them are analytical in nature, and you know, like you would do with Hadoop, and some are not, Mesos might be worth looking at. But you should also look at alternatives to Mesos too. Uh, Kubernetes and, and Docker containers are a very hot alternative these days. So that's also an alternative method for managing lots of containers that run your application across a larger cluster of computers. So Mesos isn't the only game in town there. But if all you care about is Spark and Storm out of the Hadoop world, and that's all you need to analyze your data in the big data sense, well, Mesos is an option because Spark and Storm can run on Mesos instead of Yarn. You don't need Hadoop necessarily to run Spark and Storm. But Yarn is probably still the better choice for those applications, especially if your data is stored on an HDFS cluster, because Yarn will make sure that you have data locality between your processes for Spark and the data that actually is distributed on Yarn. So it tries to make sure that the computing task that's processing your data is on the same node as the data itself, and that can be a very important optimization. Another thing is that Spark on Mesos is limited to one executor per slave, so every machine can only want, run one uh, executor from Spark. 
Whereas with Yarn, it can actually run multiple executors per node. So <clears throat> in many cases, Spark on Yarn can be more efficient than on Mesos, even though it was originally built for Mesos. Now, again, there's an option of having them run together. You know, there's uh, the Myriad system that we talked about before that has Yarn actually talk to Mesos to get its resources. So that can help you actually avoid this sort of a situation where you have a silo data center, where you just carve off a certain set of computers to be part of your Yarn Hadoop cluster and everything else is managed by Mesos or something else or nothing at all even. Um, you know, and that just runs all your web servers and everything else that you need to do within your organization. So, I mean, that's a perfectly viable architecture, by the way. There's nothing wrong with it. The only issue here is that if you're underutilizing your Hadoop cluster, all those extra resources are going to waste, right? When they could potentially be used by the things that are being managed by Mesos. So if you do have Mesos in your organization already, it is worth considering tying together Yarn and Mesos together using Myriad. And that way you can make sure that you're making the best use of the computer resources that you have and you're not leaving spare capacity from Hadoop go unused necessarily. So that can actually save you some money. So again, if your organization is already using Mesos as its higher level framework for managing containers, then okay, it's worth looking at Myriad to see if you can actually integrate your Hadoop cluster with Mesos and make better use of the resources that your company has available to it. There's also a Hadoop on Mesos package for Cloudera, which is an alternative distribution to Hortonworks that bypasses Yarn entirely and just runs on top of Mesos instead. So that's also an option for you. But otherwise, probably not. You know, if you're just going to be spinning up a Hadoop cluster and you, got, you want to have those resources dedicated to Hadoop and you're not using Mesos, just have a Hadoop cluster siloed off on the side. And using Yarn is probably going to give you the best performance and also the most flexibility in the sorts of applications that you can run within the Hadoop ecosystem. And there you have an over overview of Mesos. There's nothing to really show you or, or practice with here because it's really another piece of infrastructure that we talk about. But... I just want you to understand the term and what Mesos is all about. So with that, we can move on to our next topic.